Hello and welcome to Maker Hanger. My name's Lucas Weekly, and today we're going to be talking about servos. We'll take a look at how they work, how they're classified, and how to hook them up to the control surfaces on your plane. So let's get started. So servos are made up of small brushed motors, a potentiometer, and a couple of gears. The potentiometer regulates the movement of the motor and allows the servo to move exact amount of degrees. A servo can move 180 degrees mechanically, but under its own power, it can only move 90 degrees. If you take out the pot and replace it with a fixed resistor, then you have a continuously rotating servo. There are two main types of servos, analog and digital. They're both the same with all the physical parts, the potentiometer, the gearing, and the brushed motor, except for the digital servos have a microprocessor that takes in the input from the receiver. This allows them to be more accurate and faster. Because of this, they do take up more power. However, it's not gonna be very significant in the plane we're gonna be building. The next set of classifications is if a servo is either metal or nylon geared. Yep, you guessed it. This just means the gears inside of the motor are either metal or nylon. And obviously metal gear servos are much stronger and they don't strip as easily. The next classification is weight. And nine gram servos are the most common because they're used in foam airplanes. There are also several other types of servos that are categorized by weight and size. Nine grams are considered micro servos. There are also sub micro and standard size servos. There are a couple other types, but you'll probably only deal with micro servos when building foam planes. Then voltage is a factor. Most servos run off of three to five volts, but some high voltage servos run off of 7.4 or a 2S LiPo pack and these are for larger planes that require more torque. And the last classification is torque. You shouldn't really have to worry about this because when building a foam airplane, any small servo will be able to push and pull a control surface. And metal geared servos will be good for almost any application. Now let's talk about linkages, and there's a couple parts you're gonna need first. The servo arm, the push rod, and the control horn. The servo arm obviously goes on the servo, the control horn goes on the control surface, and then the push rod spans the gap in between these two and allows the servo to push and pull the control surface. There there are different types of attachment methods for the control horn and servo arm sides. The Z-Bend, the L-Bend, which requires an extra piece to snap on and lock it in place, the clevis, and the screw lock. Any of these can be combined on either end of the push rod to secure it in place, but the simplest is two Z-Bends. This requires no extra hardware. If you connect this linkage to the top of the servo arm and to the bottom of the control horn, then you're gonna get a large amount of movement with low resolution. And if you connect the linkage to the bottom part of the servo arm and the top of the control horn, then you're gonna have small movements with high resolution. I'll explain how to hook up the control surfaces when we start building the plane in a later episode. Now let's talk about servo placement. Servos can be mounted flat with their arms pointed away from the mounting surface. They can also be embedded inside of the plane with the arms parallel to the mounting surface. You can mechanically reverse a servo by flipping it or changing out the linkage. Let me show you. Okay, so here's our servo, and pretend that the table's our wing, and we glued the servo to the outside of the wing. Well, we can take our push rod, we can put it in, and so when I pull back on the stick, you can see the servo arm is coming at me. Well, if I flip around the servo, take off the arm, and flip it over, turn around the arm and put it back in, when I pull back at me, it's going away. So that's a way that you can mechanically reverse a servo by flipping it. Now, if we flip it this way, so take it off and flip it this way and put it back on, and I pull back, it's still going away from me. So the only way you can reverse the servo by flipping it is by this way. This is easier to see on a servo that's embedded in the foam with a double arm. So if we put in the push rod to one of the holes, I'm gonna push the stick to the left. So it's going away from me, right? Well, if I take out the push rod and put it in the other hole, and I push it to the left, now it's coming at me. So this is another way that you can mechanically reverse a servo without having to go into your radio. Having all your control surfaces hooked up isn't any good if you can't control them, and that's the job of the transmitter. So there's a lot to go over with how to program it and set it up, so I'll talk about that next time. Thanks for watching.